<laughs> okay, uh, this is photography and the art of doing it wrong. Um, these first couple images that I'll go through, um, they span various time periods in the history of photography. All of them have something that at least at, at one point was considered a flaw or something wrong. So I'll just go through these pretty quickly and then get, it, get on with the talk. Okay, so first I should explain what exactly I mean by doing it wrong. Um, by this I mean going outside of the standard way of, of doing something, in this case photography. When photography started there was no established tradition of photography since it was new. So for a while they kind of adopted the language of painting and other visual art, but that didn't quite work because it's not the same medium. Um, in painting someone is putting, putting pigment on a canvas or whatever surface. In photography light is hitting a surface and causing a chemical change to occur. So they don't really line up, even though they both create a two-dimensional image, it's not, the overlap isn't complete. So over the, over the history of photography, uh, a tradition established itself. And we started to get a sense of what, what was right and what was wrong in photography. There's standard ways of making an image um, if, I, if I say certain, um, certain styles of creating an image, you'll all have some idea of what that is. Like a portrait, you probably all imagine a, f a photograph of a person, probably including the face. A landscape is uh, probably a horizontal image, including some elements of outside. And, and there are ways, there are methods established for creating these images. But to do anything new, to expand the language of photography, you have to work outside of those. Are these on too? <laughs> Feedback? Okay, is it better now? Okay. <laughs> All right, so when you follow a prescribed method, in doing something like photography, it's hard to really learn anything new or to really know that you know what you're doing. Which brings me to the concept of fluency. Um, we understand what fluency means in terms of, of a spoken language. You can express your ideas without the language being clunky and getting in your way. Um, I'm not really worried that when I'm speaking English that the language is going to fail and my, and my thoughts won't get across. The same should be true of whatever artistic medium you decide to work in. But how do you become fluent in something? You have to know what the medium is capable of, where and how it fails, and if it is going to fail, how to use those failures as, for expressive means and choose the medium according to what your message is. Every medium has limitations. And there's this uh, cat and girl, a, a comic from the internet. And in the middle he says, he says there, what if there was a medium without limitations? And she responds saying, that's called life. So in life, there, there really aren't these limitations that, that occur in an art medium. Choosing a medium to work in is choosing a set of limitations that can better frame your message. So um, I already started talking a little bit about painting and photography being different things. When photography first came about, 
people talked about the death of painting. Nobody was going to paint anymore because why would they? You can create an image very quickly using light and chemicals. But it's about 170 years later and people still paint. And why is that? Well, painting and photography are different. Um, and they diverged a bit after, after both of them became more established in the, sa in the same space. If something needed to be super realistic, people would choose photography instead for a more, um, like, well, obviously painterly kind of expression or uh, less, less realistic, less, less natural people would use painting. And there's, there's many reasons to choose one or, one or the other, and I won't go too far into that, but the difference in those causes people to choose one or the other. And in photography itself, we can go further with that. Why choose black and white for some images, and why use color? Um, and with digital cameras becoming much more prevalent in, in the past bunch of years, um, people were saying originally that digital was going to replace film. Plenty of photographers still use film. Plenty of photographers have recently picked up film again, despite not having used it for years. It's because they're, they are different mediums. Film is a physical thing, and, the thi and what happens with the film when it's exposed is different than what happens with a sensor. The artifacts are different. Film is physical, it can be scratched, it can be damaged, and you can use those things on purpose in the final photograph. And in digital, there's, there's artifacts like JPEG compression, and some images that I have later on, like a corrupted CF card. But all of, this, all of this gets discovered kind of by, by accident, by exploring. So discovery, through, discovery and understanding through failure. You're trying to do something, and it doesn't work exactly as you thought it would. So strictly speaking, that could be a failure. But with a little bit of curiosity and maybe exploring that further, you can do it intentionally and use this on purpose. Going back to, to the beginning again, 1826, uh, this photograph by Nieps, the first photograph in, that survives today, this is taken out of a window and it's an eight hour exposure. <laughs> it took eight hours for light hitting, hitting the surface of this to change, those, to change the color of those areas, or change the tone because it's black and white. This is before they discovered development, like, which brings me to this one by Daguerre. Taken a few years later, uh, Daguerre was an assistant to Nieps. They worked together on their research in photography. This image was taken in 10 minutes instead of eight hours. So something happened in that time between. And one of the, th and one of the things that happened was Daguerre broke a thermometer. It was full of mercury. And it was in a closet. He had some underexposed, underexposed plates and he put them in that closet. A few days later, he, he comes back to them and sees that there's an image on them now. He, f he finds the broken thermometer and eventually concludes that it was the mercury vapor that caused the chemical change that brought out the image. It was this mistake that, that allowed the exposure time to go down from eight hours to 10 minutes, which makes it a much more viable art form. This is a close-up of that image, and this is the first person ever photographed.